Yes guys, so we're at High Rocks Glasgow. Today we've got men's pro singles uh, and then tomorrow afternoon uh, we're going to be doing a doubles open High Rocks with a client of mine. Yeah. Good morning guys, so we're a couple of days post High Rocks Glasgow. Um, I actually competed in the pro singles on the Saturday night and then uh, we did a doubles on the Sunday just for fun. Um, so looking back, I'm pretty happy with how the singles went. We got a 59 minutes uh, 12 seconds on the pro singles, so it's a, a great start considering that's kind of like my first uh, pro singles event. Um, but we are looking to improve so uh, what I've done the things that I've put in place for this week is to do a full biomechanical assessment just to see if we've got any imbalances the other test that I've booked in for this week uh, is an intolerance test just to make sure that I'm not allergic to any foods or anything and then the last thing that we're actually on the way to do is a VO2 max test and lactate threshold test gather the data see where we're currently at and then we're going to retest in 12 weeks time we're just at the manchester institute of health and performance i'm reading it off board that's why uh, i'm looking over there um and we're just about to get our vo2 max testing done uh, and lactate threshold um feeling actually a little bit fatigued at the moment um ran 30k yesterday so a bit sore but um should all be fine and um, just filled out the form um, again I'm left-handed so no one can read that um, excited a bit nervous as well um, yeah we'll see, we'll see what we can get gonna be running from uh, anywhere between 30 and 60 minutes I think um, this is just to get a uh, lactate threshold one and two that's what it is LT1 and LT2 yeah. uh, results so we're just going to get um, a resting blood lactate sample. So this is just so we know where you're currently at in terms of the lactate levels that you have in you at rest. So then when we start exercising, we can start monitoring with each stage where that's increasing. So just with the lancet now, you're going to feel a sharp scratch. That's it. Good job. <laughs> I didn't even feel anything then. Maybe I've got numb ears. I've got a massive head. Right. 
seven. Eight, four. Uh, yeah, it's three more eight, seven. Nine or ten, ten. So these are the data that we got for that first submaximal test. So we started off there nice and light at 10 kilometres an hour for you and increased by one kilometre with each four minute stage, increasing that exercise intensity. Um, we've got your heart rate responses here as well, which we we was the plot and we've seen your report, which increased quite linearly and nicely there and we can use that to put into your um, training zones in your five zone training model. But what we're really looking for is your blood lactate data here to find your first threshold. I'm fucking well nervous. Have we got any drinks? Have you got coffee or anything? I don't want coffee. It's, have they got water there? It's not got anything. I'm not brought anything. Wait, so we can stop the test. <laughs> Me just crying. The, the first, way is, yeah. <laughs> first way you choose to stop the test. Okay. Um, Obviously you're going to be working at VO2 max intensity, so you're not going to be able to talk to us, so it's just a strong signal that you want to stop. Starting in 3, 2, 1. In blue is your oxygen, and each triangle is a breath. And then in red there, you've got um, carbon dioxide. Oh, sounds good. Thank you for that. Not problem. Appreciate it. No, it's really yeah. yeah, so we're running a full bi biomechanical assessment for Jake, um, looking at his movement analysis. We're going to then go upstairs, and we're going to look at his joint range of motion, and we're going to look at his joint force strength, force production. Yeah, I just just want to so be... So we can lift men's weights. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah, just so I can become more efficient, more powerful. From a coach's point of view, it gives us some clear data to back up what we know when we see him move. So it allows us to actually put some numbers to what we can see when he's moving in the gym. And then we can use that then to design his programmes and sessions moving forward. Thanks a lot. We'll just keep building up in tens so it looks like we're lifting a lot of weight. We were talking about me and Joe about you being not not opening through your left hip as early as you do your right hip in the way that you just have a bit of a shift and this side's tighter. That all them things get better when there's more weight on the back. Yeah. Well that's that's usually a sign of lack of stability because the more weight you you're forced to produce better stability then. Yeah, just lift heavy weights. Make the wall ball about double the weight and you'll be sound. So the software is looking at Jake's velocity of the bar, um, his bar path, so we can tell kind of the speed that he's moving at, the strength that he's getting. Uh, so we've just built up to 75% of the warm rep max. Uh, this is just to make sure there's enough load on the bar to um, be able to assess it properly, to assess where I'm going wrong, to assess whether my hips are right, whether my knees are right, and everything's in the right place. See your bar path there, mm -hmm. and also you see your velocity data. So you do actually have a bit of a pause in your hip, and then your trace comes up nicely back down. But then we'll compare that with obviously your lower ones, see where you kind of. Well, when you say a bit of a pause, in terms of you, so you, you set yourself a little bit of dip and then you were comfortable into it. So it might be that little bit of kind of start in the rep, just okay. a bit, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. not too sure okay, how we're yeah, feeling, yeah. but it might be that stability in it yeah. um, and getting comfortable in the rep. Um, but yeah, you can take a lot from that for your squat. Uh, so now we're going to be moving on to the deadlift test. So again, we're going to be doing two reps at 60% of our one rep max and then one rep at 75% of our one rep max. and 20 kg, we're going to be lifting it for two reps. I'm actually not used to deadlifting. Since I did my back last year, uh, I've not been doing very very heavy deadlifts at all. Uh, most we've actually gone up to is around 100, uh, 110, and that's just clean deadlifts. Um, so that's when we're doing our Olympic lifting. We've not actually been testing deadlifts at all, so yeah, it's good to get them back in. Uh, deadlifts felt okay. Uh, built up to 140, built one, 
um, yeah, it was absolutely fine to be fair. Uh, counter movement jump. Yeah. So it's one of the most important for Jay in terms of he wants to work out that power. So we can take a lot from this on how he's producing power, where he's producing it from, um, and how we can improve that. I just made a loud noise there. To make it look oh, and I went off. A gust of wind on that one nearly blew you over. As soon as you start pressing, flexing through your spine, try and add some stability through here. You're not just able to kind of sta stabilise and, and tense up through here to just press straight away overhead. I'm really trying to work on it. Yeah. Compression through his core. Like you said, there's too many exercises where there's either flexion or extension where there shouldn't be, do you know what I mean? Would you recommend someone having a test like every six months or something? Or yeah, just so, you know, a lot of the way that I see it is people who are looking to better themselves training generally, better themselves in for performance or competition. So it could be you've got two, three months leading up to a comp and you're struggling and there's a particular lift in it that you struggle with. Come in, get your video an analysed, get your strength done, your range of motion done. You've got a clear path then to go, right, where do I need to improve? Right, okay. And then you've got three months to work on that. You come back in in three months. Would you, tell people, would you suggest people get like retested? And yeah, um, I think everyone I've had in so far, we are planning to retest okay. in a couple of months yeah, and to see, see where are we at, what the exercises that we've used, where can we now progress these even further? Okay. Do we need to change things? Have, have other things happened as a result? Um, that we then then need to look at. So it's all, always worthwhile. It's the same with injury and rehab. You get reassessed to know where you're at. So it's the same with performance. Feet hanging over the edge. We're going to start with dorsiflexion at your ankle. So it's called uh, isokinetic dynamometer. So it's got basically some tech inside that can measure joint angle. It can measure uh, joint force through compression or through tension. Um, so it's really handy for stuff like this where we're looking for that little bit extra extra depth. There we go. Put it down for me. Put it there. Back up. There we go. This is a new service that I've just launched. So there's a lot of kind of injury screening properties I can get for it. So like we say with Jake, when we're looking at his core activation and, and where he's moving, there's a lot of injury screening that you can do through it, but also um, looking at it from a performance enhancement point of view as well. I've also used it a lot when people have specific injuries. So sat, someone who's maybe got hamstring strain, right side to side, how much force are we losing? How much range of motion are we losing? So you can, so in terms of my actual, just general rehab as well, you get a lot, a lot from it with that. Good, back up. Good, back down. There you go. 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 Coming in, sir. Good, two. One, go. All done. Oh, thank you for that. Testing finished. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. So, I'll send John all the raw data. I'll okay. send you all the data. Okay. Um, but there are already some things we can see. Definitely yeah. turns like this is like some of your range of motion data. So that's your hip internal rotation. Okay. We spoke about that at yeah, the time. Yeah. So we can see there's like thirty six percent difference already in that. About twenty five percent in your external. Again, we, we spoke about that at the yeah. time. And then as we come kind of come to your strength, I think if we, if we come to your knees, the extension. 905 your peak force yeah whereas when we get into your flexion and your, and your hamstring and stuff right, okay. so like i say not necessarily like a massive issue for someone like yourself and um, because it's a lot of based stuff and um, your sled pushing your wall balls but still for, for just longevity yeah and, and running as well like you're yeah. doing a marathon pretty soon and um, so higher up we do want those hamstrings a little bit stronger okay Okay, what, what would you say the ratio should be? Like, should it be 50-50? It, like, should be... it won't be 50-50, right, purely no. because of the, yeah. if if you wanted to do high rocks yeah. and you wanted to be good at it, you'd be suffering if you were at 50-50, unless your hamstrings were unbelievably strong, they're not going to be, you're not going to be able to get them yeah. to that same level of force output that you can with, with your quads, but we, we just wanted that a little bit yeah. closer. Okay, so like exercises to train them? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah. 
I will get all that data exported and sent over. Thank you. But a lot, lot to see there in terms of like, like we said, with with power and um, through like your video analysis stuff we did, a lot of technique stuff, and then you got all that all that data there. Okay. Can't okay. argue with data. No, 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 no. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Right. To basically not sleep for the best part of two and a half days. We're just on a main road, so we need to be illuminated. This is really fun.